it turns out, very few truck drivers make it to five years without an accident. It's the least safe job in America. There's a mental space that people need to go into to be able to watch something monotonous for 11 hours a day, 360 days a year. And I started thinking, you know, what about a robot that made a truck remote control? There's a driver I met who, from the time his daughter was three until she was 15, he was only home a day a month. First, like it was, you know, he got divorced with his daughter's mother. And he just kind of went out because, you know, he didn't know what to do. And then he stayed out because the money's good. And he stayed out because the money's good. And he stayed out because the money's good. And at some point, he didn't know his daughter. She can't say goodbye to people. Because, like, as a kid, it was so painful. She'd see her dad, like, four to eight hours every second Sunday. She was a stranger to him. You know, 12 years passed by quick. There's a shortage of people who are willing to drive a truck for a month at a time. If the hard thing about like trucking is getting a person in the truck, what if you didn't require that? My thought was, if I was to start working on that self-driving truck thing, what would I do? What would be my first steps? Uh, a lot of smart people told me I didn't know what I was talking about. My email is like, hey, I have a funded robotics startup with no co-founder. And Carter came back and was like, I th think you're right. I think this is doable. Doesn't make sense why no one's doing this. This, this seems like a, an idea. It's 2016, and we finally had this investor who's like, I'll give you guys $75,000. Well, what we're trying to do at Star Cities, we're trying to combine what, what people are great at with what robots are great at to build a self-driving truck that's, that's safer and, and actually feasible. When we got into Y Combinator, we were sometimes able to remote control rental cars around an abandoned parking lot. After Y Combinator from 2016 through now, we remote drove a truck from a parking lot, we got the truck onto the on-ramp, put it into autonomous mode, came to an overpass, the remote driver drove the truck and, and made the turn, got the truck back onto the other on-ramp as part of that highway overpass. Not something that only works on a special road that we've predefined. We did a real driverless truck run. I had two friends die in a car accident in college. A hundred people died today. You've never heard of most of them, or any of them. A hundred people will die tomorrow. A hundred people will die the day after that in automotive accidents in the US. That will seem barbaric in a hundred years. That will seem like women dying in childbirth in 100 years. And like it should. People shouldn't die on their way to work, on their way home from a restaurant. In the future, autonomous trucks getting accidents will be newsworthy. But it'll be newsworthy because it'll be rare. Any good idea has, you know, perspectives of why it's a bad idea. Every idea has an argument against it, good or bad. There's a clear line of sight between what we did today and, and vehicles that can haul freight on the highway every day with no person in them. We did a 68 mile trip where the person sitting in the vehicle was not needed the entire time. Then we take the person out, out completely once, we start to take the person out completely regularly. And then, you know, driverless trucks are real. <laughs>